Good to see you all in God's house today. We welcome you again in the Savior's name, especially if you're visiting with us, we give you a very warm welcome. We're going to open our service by singing uh, part of phrase two in the hymn book. It's found on page 143. If you're looking up in the hymn book, O God of Bethel, by whose hand thy people still are fed, who through this weary pilgrimage hath all our fathers led. Let's stand and let's really sing it out with all of our hearts. Paraphrase two. Let's all bow our heads in prayer again this morning and let us seek the face of the Lord as we come into His presence today. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank Thee and we praise Thee for all Thy mercies to us, even this Lord's day again. As we approach Thy throne of grace, pleading the merits of the blood of the Lamb, and in the name of Jesus, we thank Thee, Lord, for the health and strength that You've blessed us with to be able to come into God's house. And, O oh God, we do pray as we have now entered into the house of the Lord that you would come and through thy word that you would speak to us. We thank thee, Lord, for the speaking voice of God. We thank thee for the infallible scriptures of truth. And we thank thee, Lord, for the word that you have given to your saints even in these days, the precious, incorruptible, infallible, inerrant word of the living God. And, O oh God, we know that someday, and we believe very soon, heaven and earth shall pass away, 
but thy word shall never pass away. For thy word is forever settled in heaven. And oh God, we pray, Lord, as the people of God, those of us who are saved, that day by day you would help us to treasure the Bible. Help us to love it more. Help us to read it more. Help us to meditate upon it more. Help us to, Lord, preach it more. And help us, Lord, to live it out more in our lives. Oh God, we thank Thee for the wonderful treasure that You've given to us. And we just pray, Lord, that You would forgive us for our neglect of it at times. We pray, O oh God, that You would come and revive our hearts afresh and give us a fresh zeal and a fresh burden to read the Scriptures of truth. O oh God, we do thank Thee today for all Thy mercies to us. And we do pray, Lord, that You would come and meet with us even in this house today. We thank Thee for every head bowed in Your presence, for every family represented. We pray, Lord, that You would unite all of our families in Christ. Remember those of our loved ones who are still outside of Christ, strangers to grace and to God, that even this Lord's day, that You would speak to their hearts and save them for time and for eternity. Lord, how we thank Thee for our blessed Savior, the one who died and laid down his life for ransom for the many. Oh God, we thank Thee for our blessed Savior. We pray, Lord, today that You would help us to uplift and exalt the person and work of Christ. And oh God, we'll be very careful to give to Thee the praise, the glory, and all of the honor. Remember those in our congregation who are sick. Touch them, raise them to health and strength again. Remember the elderly, the shut-ins, those, Lord, who can't come out to God's house anymore. We pray, Lord, that you'll minister unto their needs and bless them and encourage them. And, Lord, we pray that you'll do it for your own glory. Undertake for us now. O God, we pray that you'll have mercy upon our nation. We pray, Lord, that you would send us a breath of revival. How, Lord, we need a moving of God's Holy Spirit. O God, we pray that the tide of sin will be driven back, that you'll turn men from their iniquity. And, O oh God, that they would turn and seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. Undertake for us now, Lord, we commit this meeting and this service to thee and this day to thee. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. 279, that's good singing. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. We'll stand again while we sing.
turn to Genesis chapter 17 for our scripture reading today. Genesis chapter 17. And we're going to read from verse 1 down this tremendous chapter of God's precious Word. Over these past number of weeks now, we have been considering highlights from the life of Abraham. And we have noticed a number of different highlights from his life. We have considered his conversion, Abraham's faith, Abraham's praying, Abraham the servant, Abraham's meekness and wisdom. Today we want to consider God talking to Abraham. God talking to Abraham and Abraham's response as God talked to him. Look at verse 1 of Genesis 17. And when Abram was ninety years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am, the God, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thy perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him. Underline it. And God talked with him with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made of thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God." And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house, or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed, he that is born in thy house, and he that is bought with thy money, must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man, child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face, and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly, Twelve princes shall he begat, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. And he left off 
talking with him. And God went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the selfsame day, as God had said unto him. And Abram was ninety years old and nine, when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael his son was thirteen years old, when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the selfsame day was Abram circumcised, and Ishmael his son, and all the men of his house, born in the house, and bought with money of the stranger, were circumcised with him. Amen. We'll end our reading at the end of the chapter, knowing again that the Lord will bless the public reading of His own precious Word to all of our hearts. Good to see you all in God's house today. We welcome you in the Savior's precious name. And if you're visiting, again, we give you a special welcome. And it's good to see some folk back from holidays as well. And we do pray that as we meet together around God's Word, that the Lord will come and meet with us and speak to us through His truth. I'd like to welcome those online as well as they listen in through the social media. Just a few announcements, and of course, announcements are very brief uh, over the holidays. Do remember the third of our drive-in gospel services tonight at 6.30 p.m. And God willing, I'll be here to preach at the open air tonight, and our sister, uh, Mrs. Amy McHugh, will be here to sing at the drive. And it was really encouraging to see so many there last Sunday evening, and to see visitors in as well. So please come along tonight, bring your family and friends with you, and invite others to the special drive-in service this evening. Remember the time of prayer at 8 p.m. on Tuesday night. The Reverend Baxter will be taking the prayer meeting on Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. Then next Lord's Day, the service is as usual, 11.30 in the morning, and then the last of our drive-in services next Sunday evening at 6.30 p.m. The Reverend John Morrow will be in charge of the meetings next Lord's Day, coming along to preach God's Word. And next Sunday night, our sister Nicola Wilson will be singing at the drive-in service. Remember also the Holiday Bible Club, August the 7th to the 11th. Uh, do please continue to pray for the Holiday Bible Club, and certainly we were encouraged on Tuesday night to see so many in and the time of prayer and to pray for that special event. And we'll con continue to remember it around the throne of grace. If you haven't put your name down in the sheet yet, please do so today, uh, indicating your help and Pray especially for Andrew and Beulah McMullen as they come along to speak to the children each evening that the Lord will bless His Word as it goes forth. Remember also, uh, this is probably looking a little bit further on into the month of September. Remember the baptism service, Tuesday the 26th of September. And if there's anyone else who would desire to be baptized, then speak to us or get in touch with us ASAP. Also in the month of September, we're having a couple of special uh, testimony and family nights. On the 10th of September, our sister Esther McKee, as you know, is going into the Bible College, and we've been praying for Esther, and Esther's coming that night to give her testimony just before she starts her study. So I'd ask you to remember that special meeting. And then on the 24th of September, the Reverend Thomas Martin will be coming along to give his testimony. And certainly, our brother Mr. Martin has a tremendous testimony to the saving power of Christ in his life. And there'll be supper served at both of these meetings. So it's just something to put in your diary and to look forward to. Pray that the Lord will bless over the continued holiday time. The Lord will keep His hand upon us and refresh us. Now, over these next few weeks when I'm on holidays, the Reverend Baxter and the Reverend David Smith will be on call. But if you need a minister and you haven't got the number of these men, if you see any of the elders, uh, they'll be able to get you in touch with uh, uh, a minister. 
Also remember to pray for the Locker and Fundamentalist Convention. It actually starts today. It's, all, it's on all of this week. The Reverend Armstrong will be preaching tomorrow night. And then alternative nights after that, the Reverend Stephen Pollock and Dr. John Douglas. If you've never been to the convention, I would encourage you to go along some night this week. You'll enjoy it. It'll be really a time of blessing to your heart. If you need any of the information, I, there's still cards there, inf invitations there at the door as you leave. Please pick one up uh, as, as you leave the church today. Now, I think that's all the announcement's going to make at this time. We're going to sing another hymn in the offering for the Lord's work is going to be taken up. It's hymn number 440. Teach me thy way, O Lord, teach me thy way. Thy gracious aid afford, teach me thy way. Help me to walk aright. More by faith, less by sight. Lead me with heavenly light. Teach me thy way. We'll keep our seats as the offering is being taken up. Let us all unite our hearts together again in prayer. Let's seek the Lord's face again as we come into His presence. Our Father in heaven, we thank Thee, praise Thee for the privilege it is to open the Bible and to read the Scriptures of truth. We just pray now, Lord, as we turn to the sacred page that You would come, Lord, and fill us with Thy gracious Holy Spirit. Give us a word in season. O oh God, we pray that You'll hide the preacher far behind the cross, that none would be seen save Jesus only. We pray, Lord, today that as we leave God's house, we'll be able to say it was good to be been here, for it was here where we met with the Lord. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Please turn again to Genesis chapter 17, that portion of Scripture that we read earlier. This morning I want to draw your attention to this chapter. In this portion of Scripture, the Lord appears again to Abram. The reason why God speaks to him at this time is in order to renew his covenant with Abram. You'll remember when Abram came out of the earth of the Chaldees at the call of God, 
the Lord at that time promised Abram that he would make of him a great nation and that he would bless his seed forever. Well, in this chapter, Genesis chapter 17, the Lord is renewing that covenant with Abram. Now, as we come to consider this chapter, as I announced just a few moments ago, we want to consider the subject, God talking to Abram. In verse 3 of this chapter, we read these tremendous words, and Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him. Please underline those words. God talked with him. Here we have God the Creator talking to Abram the creature. Child of God, let me ask you a question today before we go any further. When is the last time God talked to you? When is the last time you heard the voice of the Lord speaking to you? How does God talk to his saints today? Well, the Lord in this 21st century speaks to his saints through his word. The Bible is God's speaking voice to his people. As we prayerfully read the word of God, the Lord by his Holy Spirit speaks to us through the written word. And that's why it is imperative child of God, that you and I get the Bible down day by day and read the Scriptures of truth. Because as we read the Scriptures of truth prayerfully, God's Holy Spirit will take the Word and apply it to our hearts as we read it. Therefore, you can see the importance of studying the Scriptures of truth. Now, as we come to deal with this subject today, I want you to observe four things about Abraham as God talked to him. I want you to see here how Abraham responds to the speaking voice of God. And then I want you to ask yourself the question, is this the way that I respond when God speaks to me? First of all, I want you to notice that as God talked to Abraham, that Abraham had a listening ear. That's the first thing I want you to notice. It is evident that as the Lord talked to Abraham, that this man of God desired to listen to what the Lord had to say to him. That was very important. Abraham took the time to listen to God. This characteristic, of course, is brought out throughout the life of Abraham. Throughout the life of Abraham, Abraham had a listening ear when God spoke to him. In Genesis 18, we read in verse 22 that Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And he stood yet before the Lord because he wanted to know what the Lord had to say to him on that particular occasion. You see, Abraham was a man that wanted to hear the voice of God. He wanted to know what God had to say to him. But in order to find out what God wanted to tell him, Abraham had to take the time to listen. Abraham had a listening ear. You know, child of God, you and I, we live in a very industrious age. We live in a busy time. People today, they don't take the time for anything. It's work, 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 work. From they get up in the morning until they go to bed at night, they never seem to have any time for anything but work. Now, don't get me wrong. We all need to work. And when we are at our work, we need to work hard. But also we need to listen to God talking to us. And we cannot do that if we do not take the time to wait upon God so that He can talk to us through His precious Word. The Bible says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. And let me say to every dear child of God here today in God's house, both young and old, Take the time day by day to listen to the voice of God. 
as he speaks to you through his precious, precious word. Now, it's going to take time. It's going to take patience. It's going to mean you setting aside a time every day, getting away from the cares of the world and the people of the world, getting away from everyone, and getting alone with God, getting your Bible down, and spending time before the Lord, before His Word. It's so important. It's imperative if you and I want to go on in our Christian lives to know the blessing of God in our lives, that we take the time to hear the voice of God speak to us through His precious Word. Now, you'll notice here that as Abraham listened to God talking to him, that the Lord revealed to Abraham many great truths, many new truths indeed. Now, remember, Abraham at this time was 99 years of age. And yet, even at this old age, God had still new truths to reveal to him. And Abraham learned these great and new truths as he listened while God talked to him. Now, I'm not going to take the time this morning to go through all of the specific things that God told Abraham. I'm not going to develop them anyway. You take the time to read this chapter more closely, and you will see that as God talked to Abraham, and as Abraham listened to the Lord, the Lord revealed wonderful things to his servant. For example, in verse 1, Abraham learned something new about God. Up until this time, Abraham only knew God by the name Jehovah. Jehovah, of course, means the covenant-keeping God. But here in chapter 17, verse 1, the Lord reveals for the first time to Abraham that he is the Almighty God. That's the first time this phrase, this name, is used to, uh, about God in the Bible. And the name Almighty means, of course, the all-powerful God. So here, as Abraham listens to the voice of God, the Lord reveals something wonderful, something wonderful to his servant. In verse 5, Abraham learns something new about himself. The name Abraham means father of a multitude. And God here is revealing to Abraham that from his seed there will come forth a multitude who will be faithful to God. And, of course, the Lord there changes Abram's name from Abram to Abraham. So, you can see the Lord, step by step, is teaching Abraham wonderful truths. In verse 15, Abraham learns something new about his wife. Sir, Sarai's name is changed to Sarah. The name Sarah means princess. And then from verse 6 to verse 10, take the time to read it. Abraham learns something new about God's promise. God speaks to Abraham here and tells him about circumcision. Circumcision was the new aspect that God revealed to Abraham concerning his promise. Circumcision was the sign of the covenant that God had made with Abraham. So you can see here, as Abraham listens to God speak to him. The Lord teaches Abraham many new things. Oh, child of God, the simple lesson that I want to set forth under this point is this, that God has many great truths to reveal to us as we listen to His voice. God in His Word wants to speak to us and instruct us in many different ways. The wonderful thing about reading the Bible and listening to the Lord speak to us is that you and I are never too old to learn something new about God, about ourselves, and about God's Word, and about God's covenant to us. But we will learn nothing if we fail to take the time to listen while God talks to us. So, we need to stop rushing about. And we need day by day to open this wonderful book and to study it and to read it and to meditate upon it and to pray that the Lord would come afresh and speak to our souls. And I tell you, if you take the time and prayerfully take the time to open up the Bible day by day and to take the time not just reading a short psalm uh, over a few moments and then closing the Bible and saying, well, that's my Bible reading done for the day, 
And my friend, that's not waiting upon God. That's not going to the Bible with a listening ear. It's so important that we prepare our hearts when opening up the Scriptures of truth that we hear the voice of the Lord speaking to us, because the Lord has so much to teach us and so much to reveal to us concerning His only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, concerning the way that He wants us to walk in this day and age, and He will reveal all that to us through the Word. And no matter how old we are, here we have already emphasized that Abraham is 99 years of age. He has been walking with God now for many years, and yet he has still new things to learn. The Lord is still teaching him, and still leading him, and still guiding him. O oh, child of God, no matter how old we are in the faith, no matter how long we have been saved, there's something new to learn. There's something more that God wants to teach us. But we need to take the time. We need to have that listening ear. But I want you to notice something else. Turn back again to Genesis chapter 17. And you'll notice that not only as God talked to Abraham, had Abraham had listening ear, but you'll notice also, secondly, that Abraham had a humble spirit. Look what it says there in verse 3. And Abraham fell on his face. And God talked with him. Abraham's humility can be seen here in that he falls on his face before God. Abraham, by his action, is confessing that he is the creature and that God is the creator. He is acknowledging that he is only a sinner, saved by grace. Oh, child of God, the lesson is simple. When we come before God, we need to always remember that we are the creatures and that God is the Creator. We must always come in humility, realizing and recognizing that He is the thrice holy, eternal God of heaven. Let us never forget that. Never forget that when we come to pray, when we come to open the Bible, we're coming before the Creator of the world. We're coming before the Judge of all the earth. The Bible teaches clearly that God's people are to be a humble people. Let me read you just some verses. You needn't turn to them. I'm going to read them very, very quickly. But they simply prove the point that I'm seeking to make here. Proverbs 29, verse 23, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Proverbs 16, verse 19, Better is it to be of a humble spirit with, a low, with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Proverbs 22, verse 4, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. James 4, verse 10, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up. 1 Peter 5, verse 5, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud, giveth grace to the humble. And listen to Isaiah 57, verse 15, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place, with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Now, it's a solemn thing when God speaks to His people. Abraham realized this. That's why he humbled himself before God. You know, the Bible is a holy book because it is God's book. And when God speaks to us through His Word, it ought to humble us. And certainly, as far as Abraham was concerned, it humbled him. Every time he came into the presence of God, every time the Lord spoke to him, he humbled himself in the dust before his Creator, recognizing that he was coming before the mighty God of heaven. Oh, child of God, let us never lose this wonderful truth. Let us never forget that every time we come into the presence of God, we're coming before the God of heaven, the God of glory. You know, this characteristic of humility 
can be found in all of God's servants. We haven't again got the time to read all the examples that are given of godly men and women who humbled themselves before the Lord. But let me just give you one example, and I want you to turn over to this example. Keep your hand in Genesis chapter 17 there for a moment, and turn over in your Bible to Numbers chapter 20. And here we have Moses and Aaron, and they're coming before the Lord, and the Lord is going to speak to them. And I want you to notice that they humble themselves in the presence of the Lord just before the Lord spoke to them. Look what it says in verse 6 of Numbers chapter 20. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces. There's the humility. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto them, and the Lord spake unto Moses. Oh, you can see there, as the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, how they came before the Lord in humility. Oh, dear child of God, let us always remember when we come before the Lord, whether in public prayer or private prayer, whether it's in the prayer meeting on a Tuesday night or whether it is in our own private studies in the closet at home, always remember that it's an honor and a privilege to pray, and it's an honor and a privilege to hear the speaking voice of God through His Word. But what a privilege it is to come before the thrice holy God of heaven. Oh, I pray that we'll never lose that humility. Dear child of God, we need to realize at very best we're only but sinners saved by grace. Now, we thank God for that grace and the precious blood that has bought us because of that precious blood and because of the grace of God, we can enter into the presence of the Lord and hear Him speak to us through His Word at any time. But let us always remember that God is holy, the holy God of glory. Notice something else, but turn back again to Genesis chapter 17. I want you to notice not only as God spoke to Abraham, had Abraham a listening ear, not only had he a humble spirit, but notice thirdly that as God talked to Abraham, that Abraham had a doubtful heart. I wonder, did you pick that up as you read down this chapter? For a few brief moments, as God talked to Abraham, Abraham doubted what God was saying. Take a look with me at verse 17 and 18. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. Now, why did he laugh? Notice that he laughed in his heart. He didn't laugh outwardly because it says, and he said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? You see, in verse 16, God tells Abraham that Sarah is going to have a child. Now, there's nothing strange about a woman having a child. But when, of course, we consider the circumstances that Abraham found himself in here, we can understand why Abraham, for that split second, doubt it. Sarah was 90 years of age and past childbearing, and Abraham himself was now 99 years old. Therefore, Abraham doubted that Sarah and him could have a child in their old age. Humanly speaking, of course, it was impossible. How could a woman past childbearing, now 90 years of age, have a son? Therefore, for a split second, Abraham forgot that it was God that was talking to him, and his heart was full of unbelief. Oh, child of God, I tell you, there's a lesson there for us. For you and I who are saved by the grace of God, child of God, there are times in our Christian lives, are there not, when we doubt the promises of God's Word, and like Abraham, our hearts can be full of unbelief. Oh, let us not doubt 
the promises in God's Word. Many times we speak to folk down through the years, and Christians, born-again believers, and then when they speak to us, they talk about having doubts. Can God, will God really do this for me? Has God really given me this promise? Will I really get to heaven? Are my sins really forgiven? Am I really saved by God's grace? They doubt the promises of God. And you know, if the truth were told, there are times in all of our Christian lives when we doubts will come into our minds and into our hearts, which is human. But let me say it to you today, that all of God's promises that He has made to His people will come to pass. Each and every promise that God has made in this book will come to pass. Child of God, when the Lord is speaking to us through His Word, let us listen carefully and let us believe what God says in His truth. You'll notice and it's important, I believe, that you see this, that Abraham's moment of unbelief did not stop the promise of God being fulfilled. Now, it's important that you see that. It's important that you understand that, because Sarah gave birth to Isaac. God's promise was fulfilled. But notice, I want you to notice what the Lord does here. Immediately, doubts arise in Abraham's heart. God emphasizes to Abraham again what exactly he's going to do. Now, he's already told Abraham what he's going to do in verse 16. But then in verse 19, immediately after Abraham has these doubts, look what it says there. In other words, God is saying to Abraham here, Abraham, you're not listening carefully enough. Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed. In other words, he emphasizes the promise again. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will, there's the promise, I will establish my covenant with him and with his seed with him. After him. Oh, dear child of God, isn't it wonderful today as we're gathered in God's house with all that's going all around us in this world? When we think of all the sin and iniquity that's going around us in this land of ours, spiritually speaking, the tide is far out. Many of God's people are greatly discouraged. Why should we be discouraged? Don't be discouraged. Because God is still on the throne and there's nothing happening in this land or in this world by chance. God has everything under control. Do you believe that? And every promise in this book will come to pass. And one of the greatest promises in this book is the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is coming again? Do you believe that very soon He will burst the clouds asunder and come back to this world again? That's what He has promised. Are you doubting it? Don't doubt it. He's coming back. And He's coming back to judge this world for its sin. And He's coming back to destroy this world in His judgment. But as far as His saved are concerned, His redeemed are concerned, He has promised you and I an eternal home in heaven. And thank God, no matter what happens in this world, no matter what uh, happens in this country of ours, thank God Christ is on the throne. And the Bible says, indeed, Jesus said Himself, I will build my church in the gates of hell. It shall not prevail against it. My, what a wonderful promise. Don't doubt the promises of God. Not even for one split second. Doubt the wonderful promises of God's precious truth. God always keeps His promises. God's Word will never fail. Keep your hand in Genesis chapter 17. Turn over just for a moment to 1 Peter chapter 1 and underline the lot the last verses in the chapter, verses 23 to 25. Listen to these words. Here we have Peter under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and he says this, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, 
by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. My friend, the word of God is incorruptible. That means it will never pass away. That means it will never stop existing. And that means that every promise in this book will be fulfilled, and it will be fulfilled according to God's Word. Exactly the way God says it will happen, that's the way it will happen. Verse 24, For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the Word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. We're on the winning side, in other words. Oh, praise God today as we're gathered in God's house. We're on the winning side. Therefore, child of God, look up, for our redemption draweth near. Don't be downcast. Don't be downhearted. But look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. And I'll tell you this, when Abraham got his eyes fixed firmly on the Lord, and the Lord spoke to him again the second time about this promise, all the doubts flew away. You know, we'll get rid of our doubts, and we'll get rid of our fears when we get into the book, when we have that listening ear, when we have that humble spirit, and when we put our faith and trust in what God says in His precious, precious Word. You see, the Bible is a living book. It's a living book. And God still speaks to His children through His Word in these days. There's one final thought. Turn back again to Genesis chapter 17. God talked to Abraham. Not wonderful? My friend, as God talked to Abraham, He had a listening ear. He had a humble spirit. For a split second, he had a doubting heart. But notice, fourthly, as God talked to Abraham, that Abraham had an obedient will. Learn four things about Abraham's obedience. Now, again, we have in the time to go into these points in depth, because I'm sure you want your dinner today. But I'll just mention them briefly, and you can underline the verses. Abraham obeyed immediately. Take a look at verse 22. And he left off talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. So the conversation is over. The Lord has gone home back to heaven, and he has stopped talking to Abraham. Now look at verse 23. And Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the selfsame day, underline it, in the selfsame day, as God had said unto him. There we have Abraham fulfilling the command of God. He was obedient, but he carried out the command immediately. Abraham obeyed immediately what God instructed him to do. Notice also, look at verse 27, the last verse. Abraham obeyed fully. Not only was he circumcised, and not only was Ishmael circumcised, but all the men in his household were circumcised. That's what verse 27 says. And all the men of his house, born in the house, and bought with money of the stranger, were circumcised with him. So not only did he obey immediately, but he obeyed fully the command and the instructions of the Lord. Notice also that Abraham obeyed at a great price. The flesh was sacrificed, which meant that pain was inflicted. And of course, to go through circumcision was a painful exercise. But Abraham sacrificed here in order to fulfill the will of God for his life and for the life of his family. And you'll notice also that Abraham's obedience led to blessing. God blessed him. Look what it says in chapter 18 in the verse 1. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre as he sat in the tent door. The Lord appeared to him again. 
and how Abraham was blessed because he obeyed the command of God. Therefore, the point I want to make is this. Abraham was not only a hearer of God's Word, but he was a doer of God's Word. He not only heard, but he obeyed. Oh, dear child of God, if we want God's blessing in our lives, then we must not only be hearers, but we must be doers of the Word of God. And that's why it is imperative for you and I who are saved to walk with the Lord day by day, and not only to read His Word, but to obey His Word. Not only to hear His voice, but to obey His voice. As He speaks to us, now, what an example Abraham is to each and every one of us who profess the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God talked with him. God talked with him. Does God talk to you? Through his word, does he speak to you? And when he does, how do you hear? What's your response? Have you a listening ear? Have you a humble spirit? At times, maybe have you a doubting, a doubting heart. Make sure you always have an obedient will. And that when you get up from reading your Bible and hearing the voice of God through the Word, as the Holy Spirit applies that Word to your heart, always be obedient. For obedience is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the thought of rams. Maybe there's someone here this morning and you're in the meeting and you're not saved. And every Lord's day as you come into God's house, you hear the Word of God. You hear the voice of God speaking to you. You say, preacher, I don't hear God speak to me. You do. You hear God speak to you through the Word, through the Word of God. Every time the Word of God is open, you hear, the word of, you hear God speak to you. And today God is speaking to you again, and He wants you to obey Him. He wants you to turn from your sin. He wants you to believe on His Son and accept His Son into your heart as your Savior. He wants you today to be born again of the Spirit of God and to trust the Lord Jesus as your own and personal Redeemer. Will you obey Him? We've already considered the conversion of Abraham, and I'm certainly not going to go over that sermon again. But there was a day in Abraham's life when God spoke to him in the air of the Chaldees, and he had to leave the old world behind him, and he had to trust the God of heaven. My friend, it's time for you to trust the God of heaven, to believe and accept His Son as your Redeemer. It's time for you to leave the old world behind you. It's time for you to know Christ as your Savior because time is hastening on. We're not to boast ourselves of tomorrow for we know not what a day may bring forth. Seek the Lord today. Get right with God today for tomorrow or even before this day is out. You could be in God's eternity, lost forever and forever and forever. Would you not be saved this day? And then, the next time you open your Bible, you'll hear the speaking voice of God directing you in your Christian life. I pray that that will be the case. Let us all pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank Thee and we praise Thee today for Thy Word. O oh God, we confess like Abraham, there are times when doubts fill our hearts. Forgive us for our doubting. Oh God, we pray that you'll help us to not only read the promises of God and learn the promises of God, but believe them. We thank Thee for Thy truth. Bless Your people. Bless Your saints in this house, Lord. We pray that you'll encourage them. Oh God, we look around us in this world, in this country, and there's not much to encourage us. But Lord, we thank Thee that we can encourage ourselves when we open the Bible, when we listen to the voice of God speaking to us. What wonderful truth and promises there are contained in this wonderful, glorious book. And I pray, Lord, that day by day 
in our Christian lives, those of us who are saved, that we'll meditate upon thy word. Lord, remember those in our congregation who are still unsaved. We pray that you'll save them. We pray, Lord, that you'll redeem them by your precious blood. So, Lord, separate us in thy love. Keep thy hand upon us, Lord, till we meet again in thy will. Bless the drive-in service tonight, Lord. Give us a word. O God, fill us with thy Holy Spirit. We need thee, Lord. Fill us with thy power. Bless us now. In Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen.